Dr. Dave 101. Yes, who is protecting the experiencers out there in the UFO alien world? And around here, we can still say aliens, much to the chagrin of some of the newbies on the field. who are coming on in saying, oh, the aliens, they don't like being called aliens. They want to be called ETs or extraterrestrials. Bah, come on. We got more important things to worry about. And the reason why I'm talking about this is I had one of our listeners drop me a nice little note yesterday about being an experiencer. And I'm going to read this to you guys because it's important. Being an experiencer that blindly trusted MUFON with my particulars, I felt panic and rage to see my anonymous report plastered all over a third-party entity, UFO stalker, on MUFON's website and immediately lost complete confidence in those who say they are gathering their information for the good of the community. That goes for Tessa as well. I was urged to share my experiences and evidence of my experiences with them, and after listening to the guy, there is no freaking way that I would do it, as he too seems to be all loosey-goosey about sharing information he gathers. And that's where the problem lies. With experiencers who are not willing to go public but have very good evidence, they are trapped to remain silent because if they provided any one of these organizations with information that rocks the community with some high-target data, you know none of them are going to keep a lid on it to respect the experiencer's identity of privacy. On top of that, you would have the Johns of the world ready to immediately suggest a person is mentally imbalanced and needing medical support with their claims rather than accept them at face value. And by that, I mean when they can't be explained that they be identified as paranormal, nope, and respected as such. Not happening there either. I can only wonder how many folks like me out there with some pretty amazing experiences are highly selective on who they are going to share what's going on with them. Now, as an experiencer myself, that hit me because I'm involved in this on a daily basis. I'm someone like you out there who's a fan of this topic, who's experienced this topic, but I have chosen to go public with this topic. Now, many of you out there have chosen not to for a number of reasons. Maybe you don't want family to know. Maybe it's highly embarrassing some of the things you feel that has happened to you. Maybe you don't want to lose your job. Maybe you're religious and don't want to tell anybody because you don't want the whole demon crowd running down on you from those who maybe take the Bible too far. So, how do we deal? It's hard to be judged, especially when you have a very judgmental community. The one community that is supposed to have your back doesn't. Because as we've seen over the last few years, especially in the last four, we're not supposed to associate extraterrestrial activity, abductions, and contact with UFOs or UAP. No, 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 no. The experiencer has been kicked to the side. Not shoved, not pushed, kicked to the side. Why? Because maybe, just maybe, We know what's going on, but because we can't be scientifically proving anything, we are just anecdotal stories of made-up imagination. Or maybe it's because others who are commenting on this type of phenomena have never had the experiences to understand what it's like to be abducted, what it's like to wake up on a table, what it's like to be anal probed, as some have gone through. There are nightmarish studies of cases of this. MUFON has done them. Tessa has done them. The Free Experiencers Group has done the cases. Not all experiences are bad. Not all of them are good. However, the one thing that is 100% is the experiencer is the forgotten soul of ufology. Is it fair? I don't particularly think so. If we didn't have the stories of Travis Walton, Betty and Barney Hill, 
the Andreasons, Calvin Parker, and even looking towards today, the likes of Chris Bledsoe and his family, Samantha Mowat, and others, we would have nothing to investigate. Proof. What is proof? So many times in the chat room or other chat rooms, and I hear chat hosts, I hear chat rooms, we want proof. Like taking a judge's, judge's gavel and slamming it on their desk. Where is the proof? It's Khrushchev all over again at the United Nations, slapping his shoe down on his desk. Why are we so angry about proof? I don't need to show you proof. Other people who are experiencers don't need to show you proof. And how do you get proof when you're taken in the middle of the night by a phenomena you don't understand, you don't have any re- any th- knowledge of it except for recall the next morning? Are you supposed to say to Mr. Gray Alien or Mr. Manted Being or Mr. Reptilian, uh, yeah, can you hold on a second, please? I'm just going to grab my cell phone over here or my GoPro over there, and I'm going to strap it onto my head, put it on video, and this is what we are going to do. The aliens don't give you a choice. And then when you get experiencers or said experiencers, alleged experiencers, like Demi Lovato or Anjali, coming out with, they don't want to be called aliens. That's too rough. They prefer ETs or extraterrestrials or off-worlders or Jim, Simon, Bob, Frank, Julie, Josephine, Francis. Come on. How are we supposed to be taken seriously? That's the truth. Everybody in this field wants to screw the experiencers. They want nothing to do with the stories. They don't believe anything can come of them because in the end, it's just a story. You can't trust any type of hypnotherapy because it's not 100%. You can't trust anything. The only thing you can trust is the story. Now, a lot of people out there don't like the stories. We've heard too many of them. And I understand that argument all too well. I really do. The argument of the story is this. We've heard them all before. We're tired of it. But look, ladies and gentlemen, this is what we do know as well. The governments in the world, namely the United States government, is not going to open up that little Pandora's box that tells us who's being taken and who's not. Do not buy the story of the U.S. government when they say, geez, we don't really know what these are. You know, it could be here, could be there, drones, China, Russia, you know, maybe somebody from Canada up near near Fort McMurray is flying a drone and it's affecting the airwaves. I don't know. B.S. They do know. They do know more than what they want to know. Watching these politicians squirm, saying, we don't know what they are. Ask the questions. Your own military is not going to tell you because they're so buried deeply in the alphabet agencies and the military that that information will never come out. This is why we have a controlled narrative, if you haven't figured that out for yourself. But back to the experiencers. Most people out there do not know what it's like to have your world turned upside down because of an experience. I know what it's like personally. It's not fun. I was 40 years old when all of a sudden Samantha Mowat takes me into a forest in the middle of the day and I'm looking 200 feet away from a 10 to 12 foot extraterrestrial. Proof, Dave. Where's your proof? Don't need proof. Because when your eyes are seeing something that your brain cannot comprehend, you're not thinking, "Uh, Mr. Alien, hold on right there in the forest, please. I know it's a beautiful day, but I'm going to just take my phone out and grab a selfie if you don't mind. It's not the way it works. It's scary. It's eerie. Even if you are not afraid, 
you cannot comprehend what is going on. You can barely comprehend what happens at night. You have no proof when you're dropped back in your bed. Or like John Carty, former guest on this show, wakes up the next morning and his shorts are on backwards and his shirt is off, yet he remembers going to bed with his shirt on and his shorts worn properly? What about people who wake up with scars on their body and they disappear right in front of them? This is part of the phenomena that is happening. And the problem is, what is proof? The naysayers out there, they want videos, they want photographs. But you know what happens when you provide those videos and photographs? Ah, that's fake. That's not real. That's CGI. That's makeup. Those aren't bruises. Those are freckles. All right? That's a birthmark. That's a mole. That's a goiter. All right? That's just gout flaring up whatever you want to call it. There is no win for the experiencers. And this is why, because it is never good enough, why experiencers are choosing to shut up. And it's sad because we need those stories. We need that anecdotal evidence to potentially give us some clues as to what's going on. What happens here is, When you take these stories, if you look into each and every one of them, you may be able to find patterns to what is going on. We need those patterns. We need to study those patterns. This is why it blows my mind when someone like Brandon Fugel, who owns the Skinwalker Ranch, will not bring experiencers onto his property. Sure, he's had people come onto the property who have had experiences, who have had phenomena happening. But what about those people who could contact that phenomena or conjure up the phenomena, summon the phenomena? Why are we not testing that? Fugel told me personally, we haven't thought about it. It's not very scientific. Sure it is. But once again, the experiencers get the runaround. They're told they're not good enough. Their story's not good enough. It sounds unbelievable. You know what? These are people who have experienced very trauma type of phenomena. Trauma so great that they don't even want to tell their spouse, their friends, maybe their church leaders, their bosses, their teammates. They don't want to talk about it. And that's a shame because we need those patterns. We need those consistencies. We need to figure out what these downloads are about that the experiencers are having. But the unfortunate part about it is more and more we see experiencers not trusting anyone to share their stories. This is why Lynn Wallington, our weekend host here on Spaced Out Radio, is starting an experiencer speak group. It'll be starting within a couple of weeks. And if you are an experiencer, I ask all of you to start it. What you may not know about Lynn is she has a psychology degree. She worked with Dr. Edgar Mitchell's free experiencers. She knows what it's all about. And it's about talking about this, giving people an avenue where they know they're not going to be prejudged, where they know their story is not going to be ridiculed or torn apart as some dream that is easily denied and easily torn apart. Give the experiencers a chance. Lay off of them a little bit. And by God, if somebody comes to you in confidence, keep their information quiet because the experience, they are reaching out. It is their own community that is turning their backs on them. And that's a sad day in ufology, but it won't change until more people understand what is going on. And that's your Dave 101. 